Meta, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, just announced their new generative AI. And if you thought we were screwed before, it gets really bad. I'm going to compare side by side the best generative AI imaging tool out there now, Midjourney, against Meta's new tool. And it's disturbing. First of all, it's real disturbing because Midjourney, there is a big barrier to using it. You have to fire up Discord, connect to a chat server, log into like a newbies group where a bunch of other people are going to be spitting images out. There's a bunch of syntax to learn. It's a very technical, non-accessible process. Meta's new tool at imagine.meta.com is completely free extremely fast. It happens in a few seconds instead of a few minutes and there doesn't seem to be any limit. God knows I made a lot of images in this test. First, let's look at lifestyle photography pictures. A woman in red dress on beach with a lighthouse in the background and seagulls flying through the sky. And at a glance, they both look pretty amazing. The mid-journey version is a little hyper-realistic but looks more photographic while the meta version almost has like a sketch-like two-dimensional quality to it. Neither one are particularly good at rendering seagulls. So if you look closely, you see lots of just like screwed up wings and stuff. Winner, Midjourney. Now, how about a black woman drinking coffee while looking out a window? Here, I think Meta produced the better image. The lighting on her face is much more natural because it's explained by the open window. But if you look at the Midjourney image on the left, the lighting is clearly coming from some off camera source. Also, the left hand in the Midjourney image seems to have just three fingers, but on the right hand on the meta image looks a little square and flat so hands still aren't the strength of either of these tools but at a glance both of these tools pass i think it's a win for meta though now let's move on to wildlife photography i looked at a lot of pictures just one sample because this was pretty representative a bald eagle catching a fish from a lake with mountains and a sunrise in the background sort of the wildlife photographer's dream come true they both did okay. They both got all the correct elements in here. I don't know why they made them both so HDR-y and so high contrast. They overdid it. Neither one could produce a decent image of the fish in the talons of the eagle. That was too much for it. They all came out a little bit deformed. Both the eagles are nicely backlit, but I think the meta version is just a little bit nicer because we see some kind of weird fringing and what looks like heavily raised shadows on the mid-journey version. Also note there is a watermark in the lower left corner of all of the meta-generated images. This would be extremely easy to remove either by cropping, cloning, or using one of many free watermark removal AI imaging tools on the internet. Let's look at how both the tools handle intellectual property, which is getting them to render copyrighted images. First, a cyberpunk Porsche 911 on a rainy night in Tokyo. They both definitely rendered a modified version of the 911. Neither one of them successfully rendered the logos. The wet streets look great, and both in the reflections on the mid-journey version just look amazing. The bokeh, the blurring of the background on both of these seems incredibly natural, going from the focal point and then smoothly fading off as the street goes into the distance. Now let's look at Ronald McDonald drinking from a Coca-Cola bottle. Both of these Ronald McDonalds are completely unrecognizable. Midjourney would only give me evil clowns. Every option was an evil clown. I don't get it. But there was no option with Midjourney where the Coca-Cola bottle was recognizable for better or worse. At least in the meta version, you can recognize that it's Coca-Cola and he's in a more realistic setting instead of a studio. So I'm giving this one to meta. Next, how do they render celebrities? This has been a real problem with Midjourney because the celebrity images can be so realistic that people render them and then push them on the internet and people think celebrities are doing something crazy like the Pope in a puffy white jacket, which people actually believed and got spread all around. If I put that into Midjourney, it will continue to render realistic images of a Pope in a puffy white jacket. The Meta AI tool completely blocks this and pretty much any image with like a proper living person in it. So I guess if you want to render celebrities, you go with Midjourney, but I'm kind of glad that Meta AI is blocking that because what legitimate reason do you have to render fake images of famous people? Now let's look at how they render text when directed. Here is Santa holding a sign that says Merry Christmas. And I was actually really impressed with how well Meta did here. It put the R in the wrong word, but it's almost like what a kid might do. It's, it's very close. Whereas Midjourney completely botched it. And this was the best. This one had recognizable letters, but all the other images that Midjourney generated were complete nonsense. How about a YouTuber holding a sign that says, buy my crypto? We've all seen that YouTuber. 
Here, the meta version, at least it got the word buy correct, and it put a sign in there that vaguely looks like a crypto sign, and the image itself looks fairly realistic. He's got the right number of fingers, they're a little sausagey, but I think he looks pretty good. In the mid journey version here, the writing makes absolutely no sense, but the image otherwise looks pretty good. Again, his fingers, his face, the background looks pretty good, the bokeh is really nice. Now let's look at how the images allow you to steal other photographers' styles. This has been a, a real problem because now suddenly you can render something like Ansel Adams by simply saying Yosemite landscape photograph in the style of Ansel Adams. Here the two tools gave me extremely similar images. Neither one is photorealistic, but I do know at least in mid-journey, I can go in and specify photorealistic and make a few attempts. Again, my methodology here was a little more simple. I gave them each one shot, but mid-journey is extremely configurable. I didn't want to go through that whole process because uh, meta, we're still kind of figuring out how to tune it and tweak it, so we're not quite there yet. But if I look at these two images, well, th neither one looks realistic, but the mid-journey image is wildly over-sharpened, which is weird for an AI image, because everything just has like crazy edge glow. Nonetheless, it is rendered in black and white. I didn't ask it to render them in black and white, but I did say put it in the style of Ansel Adams, so there it's kind of stealing a famous photographer's work. I'm going to give this one to Meta. I think the image looks a little bit better. I also said, portrait of an older woman in the style of Annie Leibovitz, a very famous portrait photographer in Midjourney, really nailed this one. And the woman overall looks pretty realistic to me. You can see the catch lights in her eye accurately reflect the light source that would give the skin and hair that particular quality. Meta wouldn't generate this at all as long as it had Annie Leibovitz's name or many other photographers. If it was a proper known person, it seems to block the request completely. Again, I respect that. How about designers who might use these two tools to generate logos? Another common request, I asked them both to generate a logo for a small hip beer brewery. And here I think the clear winner was Meta. I also asked for a logo for a luxury Italian clothing brand. And I thought they both did well here. They have that sort of classic Italian style, both kind of simple. I'm going to call this second one a tie. But so far, Meta's ahead overall. I also wanted to see if they would render images featuring drugs or violence. So I asked it to show me SpongeBob SquarePants smoking a joint. And Meta would not give me that. Lucky for you, I'm an extremely skilled hacker. So what I did was I changed smoking to holding a joint. And then Meta happily gave me a picture of SpongeBob SquarePants holding a joint. When you look at these two images, keep in mind, I picked the very best image that Midjourney generated of the first four. They were all this like crazy style. At least Meta gave me an image that actually looks like SpongeBob. So clearly the winner here is Meta. How about violence? Godzilla shooting an AK-47 at a city. Now, as I look at this image, well, neither one of these seems to be an AK-47, but they both are violent, and neither tool seemed to restrict me from generating violence. Good news, fellow Americans. How about if I just gave it an open prompt? See what it would do. I asked it to make me the most creative photo. And they both did kind of interesting things, but I thought the mid-journey's most creative photo was way more interesting than the meta's most creative photo. So that's going to be a win for mid-journey. So in summary, Meta is easier, faster, and free. And if you hadn't had a chance to play with generative AI yet, go check it out because it's super accessible and fun and it can easily suck a couple of hours out of you. And if you are a professional photographer, it's not gonna go away. But think of the ways you can use it. If I'm planning a portrait at a beach, I will describe the person and say portrait at a beach and check out the different options that come up. And it just, it just gives me some ideas. Now, overall, mid-journey is going to be better for people who are serious because it's much more configurable. You can do things like specify the aspect ratio. It's crazy that Meta does not allow you to make like wide 16 by 9 images or standard 2 by 3 or 3 by 4 images. Everything's got to be in that like vertical 4 by 5 ratio that's so popular on Instagram. I'm sure options like that are coming probably at a price. Midjourney also allows you to render celebrities and to steal the style of photographers. Wait, if you actually want to learn photography, check out our book, Stunning Digital Photography, an award-winning photography book that not just a book, but includes 20 hours of video that's on sale at northrop.photo now. We also have books on post-processing about Lightroom and Photoshop to make your images even better with or without AI. Bye.